Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Today, as always, there's someone with me. He's this dude I met on the internet like 23, 24 years ago or something. He's still hanging around, but now he's a producer, director, cameraman, IT guy. He's also my husband, Phil Gortimer. And good afternoon in a very cold East Coast. Yep. Good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. As I noisily stir our cocktail. Yeah, let me turn the audio down here so we don't right. blow people's ears out. It's fine. Okay, there we go. Now, you're wondering, you're going, Pete, I see two cocktail glasses, but what? why are you pouring it in there? What's going on? This makes it feel. Well, I have this little contraption here that Santa brought us for Christmas. This is a Manhattan, and we're gonna smoke it today. So while we'll light this- Light that a bit more. A little please. bit more? Okay. Here, let's show everybody what that looks like. Push it up a bit. There you go. I can't tilt it back. That'll screw it up. <laughs> so while this smokes, takes a couple moments. I know they say just 10 seconds. We're going to go a little longer because that's a lot of it to smoke in there. So, uh, dear, what do you have? Well, since we're talking about what do we have, we didn't announce this a few weeks ago. Because they would kind of forgot and be. All right, let's do this. Let's do All this. Right, hold on. I'm dissipating. back to you then. Yeah, here we go. Ooh, because the smoke is dissipating. I was hoping for a bigger thing, but it will. Let's pour this. Well, this is going to be the tough part pouring from this glass into that glass, but we'll see. Where's your strainer? Uh, behind me. There's no ice, though. Yeah, but the Hawthorne strainer fits on that glass. But there's no ice for it to strain, dear. Okay, it'll still strain. There's nothing for it to strain. <laughs> what part of... <laughs> See what I live with? Fine. Then I will keep this. Oh, that's fine. I don't eat those anymore. I'll, I'll keep this gift for myself. That's fine. Need help packing? So, clink. Cheers to you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, our new logo bug is working. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's good. good. That that's good. amazing. Mm. Yeah. So, you can definitely taste the smoke. Okay, now it's back to me. I was gonna say, we haven't, we didn't talk about this in our last live stream because we had taken the month off of doing videos, but a few weeks ago, we turned 800,000 views. We're actually at 825 right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, VidIQ and TubeBuddy are predicting that we will hit 1 million just late April. So yay us. All right, today it's all about the shell game. Oysters, clams, and mussels. And what Phil brought over was some lovely oysters. Now, dear, there was a hitchhiker in one of these. Oh, what? Again, a Another crab. crab? Yeah. Cool. So uh, we have several here that are shucked. Do we want to demonstrate now, or should I just start We'll talk crabbing? about them first. Mm. All right. All that, and then really I'll, I'll shuck one. It's really tough to stand here and talk about oysters. Yeah. All right, let me get my notes. Ah! Linda, from the new site that we featured in our last live stream, okay. is joining us today. Oh, good. Welcome, Linda. And at our uh, 4 o'clock hour, we're featuring a new young YouTube mm, channel that she recommended yep. to us. All right, so all about oysters. We'll start with them because why not? Oysters are one of those things that it seems like you either love them or you hate them. Very polarizing thing. And I'd say, what do you think, dear? With our friends, maybe it's like 50-50. Um, people who love them or hate them. Yeah, because really oysters yeah. are meant to be eaten raw. And you well, say raw to some people, and they go, ah, yeah, ah. There's yeah. a lot of other things you can do with oysters there and cook is, them. There is, but... People do get a little crazed over that. Now, of course, oysters are considered an aphrodisiac, which is fun. 
I don't know how scientifically based that is. I think that's just an urban legend. However, at the cost of them, uh, I mean, they, were, they weren't too terrible, but they're not uh, the cheapest shellfish out there. Uh, but, you know, it works if, we if got, you like oysters. We got you covered, James. He says he's not an oyster fan, but mussels. We're going to be doing <laughs> mussels Hi, James. in just a bit. Yes. Yes, we are in this big pot here. So oysters have been eaten by humans at least 10,000 years. There are in all over the world, but there's one, an article I read in Wales where it's called a midland, and that's a dump of, it's like an archaeological site where, where civilizations, towns, whatever, would dump all of their things. And, and there have been oyster shells that they've dated back to uh, 10,000 plus years. They have been cultivated in Japan uh, since 2000 BC. That's kind of interesting. People have been eating these for a long, long time. And of course, it always begs the question, who was the first person who opened one of these up and yeah, looked well, at this that looks like snot and yeah. says, I can eat that? Yeah. Well, someone, thousands and thousands of years ago, dear. So... You're probably wondering, how do you open an oyster? What do you do? How do you get there? All right, let me right. come over here. While he's coming over here, I will tell you, or do you want to talk about it? You can talk the about tool. it. The tool. Okay, so we use a special tool, the oyster knife. Now, a lot of TV chefs, a lot of chefs in general don't like unitaskers. This is one time you want to do this. You don't want to try and open any type of shellfish with a sharp knife, a steak fish, uh, a butter knife wouldn't work on these, but this is for oysters and other shellfish and mollusks, and this is what you need to have. So my dear husband's going to come over, and we have one, two, three that he is going to open on camera. I'm just going to open one probably. All right. Okay. All right, let me just show the board. One. Okay. Let me sneak over here. Let me push this out of your way. Because well, you can. Go. I am the shucker. So again, you must really have the proper knife. Don't do it with anything else. And don't do it like you see the TV chefs do it in their hand. It, it takes a long time to get experience and you're just gonna hurt yourself. So really, it's pretty simple. If we look at the oyster, there's a cup side and there's a flat side. And if you're not sure what it is, because it's flat, look on the end and you'll see a little hinge right there. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna put a towel over the top to protect our hands. We're gonna take the knife, we're gonna put it in that little hinge and push. Now sometimes you gotta kinda work it in there and at some point when you twist gently, you'll hear a pop, there it is. Now, this guy's still alive, he's not gonna let go of this thing, so we need to take the knife, the tip of that knife, and we're gonna run it all the way through the top to separate that top muscle and that shell comes off. Right? See, I should broke a little bit. There's another muscle on the bottom, so the same thing. We're gonna cut and loosen that. And now, we've got a shelled one. So let's see if I can do another one quickly, since I broke that one. You know, I can't see the board, but I bet you anything our son is in chat going, I'll be right over. Steak okay. for dinner, if you are. Yeah, because, you know, steaks and oysters. And again, mm -hmm. a little practice. Sometimes you're going to have to dig at it. If you can't get it to go, put it aside. You've annoyed the oyster enough, he might loosen up, and you can try it again in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going back to... Well, would you like to take some with you? Well, you can deliver them. Let me get that. Oh. Let's put All you right. back now on screen. Made a mess of my board. That's okay. You can bring me one or two yes, dear. or 30. Yes, dear. Okay, so we got, uh, let's see here. Uh, thank you, Linda. I don't get to be on screen very often. Oh. So, because, you know, I'm the sous chef of the family. <laughs> that's your own fault, dearie. So, yes, get yourself an oyster knife. Okay, I was right. <laughs> Look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's get you okay, back here. Okay, let me get you a little plate. Yeah. Do we have any uh, lemon? Yeah, I'll get to that. Squeeze me a bit of lemon. What? Yes, dear. <laughs> Linda says the same thing, but uh, her husband is also the sous chef. Okay, 
Okay, so it looks like we people are waking up. We have 11 people watching us live in, whoops, let's get me on camera here. We have 11 people watching us live in YouTube. That's and excellent. we've got two in Facebook. Yay. So Yay. again, I don't get too crazy that we don't have a ton of people because our last live stream two weeks ago got a thousand views. So, but it's a whole lot more fun right. when you're all chatting with us. Okay, back to me, Bob. Back to you. Thank you. So oysters, what do you have with them when you have them on the half shell, right? Traditionally, classically, you can have a mignonette sauce. What's a mignonette sauce? This is a mignonette. It's very simple. It's shallot and vinegar, a little bit of sugar, sometimes salt and pepper. Very classic French type flavors. You can change that sauce by changing the vinegar. You could use a tarragon vinegar or a sherry vinegar. You could, instead of using shallots, you could use chives or scallions or some other herb that you like. Cocktail sauce is another favorite. Now this doesn't look it, but this is a very spicy cocktail sauce that we like. And of course, I think our other favorite is classic, just lemon. Clean, pure, that's all you need. So I will give you a couple wedges of lemon Give me here. a watch, just give me one. You can save that for the... Uh... Well, I have four here. Okay. We don't need them for other things. You don't need them for mussels? No. You see, these are the conversations we have in live stream. Yeah. You don't need a fork yet, but you will need a napkin, won't you? Yeah, it'll be a sl <laughs> slurpy right. mess. Be right back. Normally I'm delivering you a cocktail, but okay. I've already got the cocktail. Yes, dear. There you go. Yay! May I have one? May I have an oyster from the half shell on TV? Sure. Can I show it off? No, I've never done this before. I no, never. Know. All right, I'm going to put these aside. I can do it without spilling. Wait, can, can we? Let's do a dual screen here. We'll have, we'll have dueling shuck. All right, hold on, hold on. Just just calm down. No, I don't oh, he's going for the mignonette. I'll just have a little lemon, too. Okay, here's my oysty. Oops. Here we go. Cheers. Very good. Oh, wow. That is good. Yep. Mm. Very briny. Um... Every oyster from different parts of the country has di different flavors. So I'm not quite sure where these came from. Do you remember, dear? Uh, huh, I thought I had it in here. You mean about the, the trip to New York? Yes, and the oyster flight. You want you to talk about, about the oyster? Oh, you can do it. Well, I don't remember what they all were. So a few years ago, I think actually about 10 years ago now, for Thanksgiving weekend, after we did Thanksgiving with our family, we went to New York and we spent the rest of the weekend in New York City. And at, the, at the I'm getting there studios. He doesn't want to talk about it. He wants me <laughs> to talk about it, but then he talks about it. So the first thing we did after we got settled in our hotel is we went to Chelsea Market, where of course Food Network Studios headquarters are located. And it's a wonderful, amazing place. We had lunch at this. Uh, I guess it was a seafood restaurant, but anyway, they had a flight of oysters, and it was like what two dozen, three dozen. It was, it was a lot. It was like yeah, but they were well, from all over, a... like both sides of the country, all over the place. It was probably thirty. I know it was eighty dollars, which yeah. we thought was expensive, but then when you saw you got eight, um, all of those, and they had twenty-five different varieties, and sort of like going to an old-fashioned. Chinese, you picked a couple from column A and column B and column C. Yeah, they're from up and down the east and west coast. And it was amazing because he let me, you know, we kind of shared it. And oysters from here tasted completely different from oysters from over there. And they were all good, but just having them side by side, it was an amazing experience. Well worth the money. And I, I wouldn't consider that expensive now. Oh, maybe. So let's welcome Michelle. We're going to talk about her a little later. Welcome, Michelle. At our four o'clock hour, but welcome. So actually, before you get a little too further, let's do a little... Find out who's here and where they're Oops. from. Oops, I never took that off. Anyway... Silly bear, and I'm still... So, yeah. yeah, let's see where everyone is watching from. So in your chat, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, just say hello from and whatever your city and state is, and I'll build a map of who's watching from where. Hmm. I thought I'd fix that. Oh, well. 
silly bear. See, that was that one thing earlier you were going, there's something I'm forgetting. Well, we're while ready. you're talking, I'll fix it right now. Okay, just don't, don't like take the channel down like happened one time before. Nah, I wouldn't do that again. <sighs> Like last week? <laughs> Let's see, run down. So, you know, that's a little bit about oysters. Now, that's oysters on a half shell, which people find very polarizing. OMG, that's disgusting. How about talking? Or talking. Cooking with oysters. There we go. Now we got it fixed. There you go. I'll leave that up for a bit. Okay, so how about cooking with oysters? My mother loved oysters on the half shell, but she loved, well, she loved oysters, Anthony, but her other favorite was fried oysters. We were going to do them today, but... We wanted to do mussels, I wanted to do clams, and there was just too much to do in one hour. And we thought we'd prefer oysters on the half shell. Um, but yeah, you can fry them, which are wonderful. Uh, you know, you soak them in buttermilk, and then you spice them up, put them in some cornmeal and flour mixture, and then fry them fast in hot oil, and they're, they're amazing. Oh! Uh, what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hank just joined us. Okay, Oops. hi Hank, I can't see what Let me says. get rid of the other one. Please. Uh, there we go. Finally here, Love Oysters Clam on the Half Shell from Phoenix, Arizona. Great, Hank. Um, do you get many oysters and clams in Arizona? I guess they're flown in every day. You know, the desert. <laughs> I don't think we're we're kind of lucky here, being between Philadelphia and New York, which yeah. are both yeah. big food capitals, but the Jersey Shore, which is only 15 minutes from my office, yep. There are lots and lots of places to literally get them right off the boat. We've got a bunch of places here that offer them. Even our local shop, right, yeah. gets them um, from vendors. And these we literally just went went this up morning. this morning uh -huh. and picked them up, and yeah. they're beautiful looking. <laughs> and we have extras. Ah, Linda likes the color of our Dutch oven. Oh, thank you. This one. Good old. Oh, the purple one or the one in the back? Yeah. This is my newest one that Santa brought me, but this is one of my old favorites. She never left Might me have down. a fetish with uh, cast iron, just Well, saying. in Kitchen Elliot in, in general, how many sets of dishes do we have? How many Dutch ovens? How many sets of silverware? Not enough. Anyway, other cooking. Uh, oyster stew is another favorite thing. Great, this time of year, especially when it's cold and windy and, and a nice rich oyster stew uh, with some nice oyster crackers would be lovely. And of course, um, you could grill them in your shell, uh, in their shells. We had a friend who, uh, at the airport, George Ross, yep. uh, he showed me a long time ago, this is way long ago, tw almost 25 years, how to cook clams and things on the uh, grill like that. Uh, he brought a bunch of clams and put the shells right on the grill and covered it up and they steamed and opened and they got all that grill flavor, it was wonderful. You can certainly do that with oysters, too. And then, of course, there's that other ingredient, which we didn't get today and we probably should have, uh, smoked oysters in a can. And I don't tend to eat many things out of a can. There's a couple exceptions here and there. Brian says, I love oysters, but I only get them at restaurants. I'm afraid to open them myself. Well, okay, but now you see, it, it's, it's not horribly difficult. It just takes practice. You know, you love seeing on TV or if you go to a seafood restaurant and there's that one guy who just picks them up and like chuk, 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 and gets a dozen done in, you know, 10 seconds. That's because that's all he does all day, every day. I usually end up breaking about the first two or three yeah, until true. I get back into my rhythm. It's true. But once you get going, yeah. it gets pretty easy. And like I said, even okay. if you get one that won't open, put it aside. You'd be surprised how in a couple of minutes it'll open. So that's about oysters. Could you be a deer, my dear? And cook, get some mussels? Uh, yes, you know? scamper off to the fridge and get me my mussels. So let's cook some mussels. Let's talk about mussels. Get rid of that. As my husband slams every door in the house. Thank you, dear. Or in the TV studio. In the TV studio. So here we are. How beautiful are they? So these are blue, I guess they're blue mussels. Lots of different types of mussels. Lots of different types of oysters and clams too. Um, mussels are very, very affordable. Uh, a big bag, which is about two pounds, is, is like three, four dollars maybe. So they're, they're very affordable. And that's because they are mostly farmed. 
and, and that's fine. Now, to prepare mussels, the first thing you want to do is you want to give them a good rinse because they're going to be very dirty and sandy. You can see there's grit in the bottom of this bowl. The other thing you want to do is you want to clean them and inspect them. So you want to make sure that they are nice and closed. If there are any that are open just a tiny bit, you just give it a little tap like that. And then if it closes up, it's still alive. And that's what you want. You don't want to eat a dead mussel. Yes, Preston. We have a cat who wants them. Yes. Now. Now, you have to clean them. Now, here we go. This one is a little bit open. Now, he has a little barnacle on him. That's fine. It will not hurt you. It'll probably come off when you cook it. Sometimes you can pry them off, but you can just ignore it because you're not going to eat the shell. But he's opened up a little bit. Let's give him a little tap, and we'll give him a moment, and we'll see if he closes. Yes, Preston. Now, sometimes you get one with the beard. And these are pretty clean. A lot of times they come cleaned, but you may see like a little hairy thing coming out of the side or the tip. And that's the beard. There we go. Um, these are all pretty clean, so I don't have one to show you. But all you do is you just pull it off or you snip it off with some scissors or your knife. What you want to check for, I'm from New England, and when I was growing up, a lot of us had driveways made from clams and oyster shells. Yeah, I remember that visiting my family in New England, too. That was very common, like out on the end of Long Island and up in the upper, the coastal areas of New England. Anyway, what you want to check for is any cracks, anything that are open that don't close. And so, like, this one has a little hole in it. So, he's probably dead. We're not going to, we're going to discard him. Now, did this guy close? He did not. That's sad. He must be just about dead. So we're going to discard him. Now, that being said, when you buy a oh, bushel no, there he goes. at $3.99, you can expect yeah. a half a dozen to be not usable. Sometimes they're well, perfect, but yeah. you know what? There's always going to be, when I was cleaning these, I found about four of them that were broken or, or widely opened. All right, this guy's closing up, so yeah. we'll keep him. Now, how are we going to cook these? First, this is upsetting me. There. Okay, well. I'm gonna put some heat on. So Willow says, I love all things clammed. Fried chowder on the half shell. I agree with you 100%. People do not eat enough seafood. They spend all their time in beef and steaks. Unless you are a pregnant woman, there's no reason to avoid shellfish. Well, there may be other medical reasons. You know, there may be people with immune system, but you know, then if you can't eat them, you can't. There are people with allergies, but otherwise, have at it. It's wonderful. All right, I'm gonna get this on, that medium high heat. And we're gonna put a couple glugs of olive oil in. Yeah, a couple tablespoons. In my well used pan here. And we're gonna have some butter. Why not? Butter with seafood? Absolutely. More flavor. Right in. I don't need this. But I will need that. Let's get that going. And my fingers are working faster today. Good bear. So I'm getting you there. Good. Shallot is next. This is a classic preparation. I have one big shallot that I just diced up. And this is one of those cases where you don't have to worry if you don't have perfect knife skills. It's fine. We'll get that in, get that going. We just want it to start to soften. We're not frying, just softening. Garlic is next, a couple of cloves. Right in. We're gonna let these go for just a minute or two. So about mussels. Again, have been eaten by humans for thousands of years. Uh, there are a lot of different types of mussels. They are grown all over the world. I got mussels tonight having Turner green lip mussels from New Zealand with a saffron cream sauce. That sounds amazing, Hank. Damn, you got an extra bedroom? I can be there in a few <laughs> hours. Ooh. Probably, oh, because I couldn't make that for you, dear, really? Yeah, okay. but someone else is gonna make it for us. That's the better part. But yes, 
Kevin, I love oysters, mussels, and clams. Mackenzie has even had a few clams. Good, yeah, our little girl has a pretty good palate. But I think her favorite thing, Kevin, is steak, isn't it? So right. Hank earlier said my dad always made oyster soup on a cold oh, winter okay. day. Oh yeah, well. nice, yep. All right, so these are going nice and sizzling. It's nice and hot. I'm gonna dump in our mussels. Right in. And now I'm gonna hit it with some dry white wine. Yeah, that looks about good. Let's crank up the heat a bit. And we're gonna put the lid on so we trap all that steam in there. Now, dear, can you distract them while I get rid of this bowl? No, you have perfect timing. It's four o'clock. It's time for the oh, me segment. There you so go. Here we go. So, let me uh, go back on let me get on camera here and get my screens organized. Um, as most of you know, we make it a very big part of our channel to help other channels getting started, either by showing them off on our live streams or when someone asks from a technical point of view how we do all this mess that we do here and suggestions, because we know what it's been like. It's hard to start a YouTube channel. And even if you do, it's two to three to four years before you got traction. We've been at it for six, and it only about three years ago did we really start getting anywhere. So we always like to feature at least one new channel. So today, oops, I'm going to bring you to Cuisine de, de Michelle. And we found uh, Cuisine de Michelle through Linda B, who we featured two weeks ago, which is how I find most of these. I ask. And she has 715 subscribers, 133 videos, and she's kind of been at this for a while. Now, what I do like is, unlike a lot of um, small YouTube channels, she has a number of shorts. Now, shorts in our uh, type of style of video doesn't work for us, but I have a lot of respect for people that can do shorts because they do them well. And a lot of good videos. And she, you see here, she's very current. Lasagna was a day ago, donuts four days ago, seven days ago. So, on top of that, she's also got an amazing little website where you can get all the recipes and print them out. And I was looking back here and she's got recipes going back to 2020. So absolutely, again, for any YouTube channel, you want to help them, subscribe, look at the video, like it, but more importantly, leave a comment. Yep. Even if it's just yum or I don't like it, because even bad comments are good comments. Well, because YouTube learns that people want to see your stuff. So give a like, give a subscribe, go help her out, make her day. Okay, back to you. Thank you. So these are gonna take a couple more minutes. And you know, there are good comments and bad comments and then there are really bad comments. You missed it, this had a little flame up. <laughs> a little of the wine got away from you? Yeah, yeah, it was a little too hot and I, so that, so we've had flambéed oysters, but, or uh, yeah, thingies. Oh, they're getting there. Oh, look who's here. One more minute. Hi, Rich. It's our RCB. Yeah. So again, put in your com in the comments, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, doesn't matter which one, and just say hello from wherever you're from. So hello from Niagara Falls, New York, and we'll build a map and let's see who's where. So we're up to 15 people watching live today. That's good. That is, that's excellent. So I'm happy with that. And I'm actually loving muscles coming up. So yep. back to you. Okay. Okay, these should be about done. These go really quickly. Yes, comments are very important. And what I have learned in, in my time on this is, if you can, have someone else read your social media comments. Because if you read them and you get a keyboard warrior who says something mean and nasty, it's gonna kind of ruin your day. So I have him vet all the comments. 
I volunteer to manage a lot of forums in a lot of groups and I help out a lot of YouTube channels. So I kind of know how to deal with those right. people and it's kind of fun when you can uh, annoy them a little bit, yeah. but a comment is a comment as a comment. Well, that's true, but you know. All right, Hank says all we have to do at this point is add some saffron tea and heavy cream. Right. Yep. All right. Dish these out. Lovery. And this too, at this point, if there are any that didn't open, discard them. And you may discover, you know, there, there may be one that didn't open and that means it's not going to open. You know, you can give them, when, when you first check them and they're just open a tiny crack, you can give them another minute or two. You don't want to go too long because you don't want to overcook them. And what we like about mussels is at $4 a bag, yeah. um, they're so inexpensive. We yeah. have a cocktail every night Hmm. And, you know, you've already seen that. Um, so we do a lot of cocktails and cheese, and Mussels makes a wonderful little pre-appetizer, and they're so inexpensive. Um, when you go to a store, there are usually two types. You'll see Mussels for about $4, and then you'll see another bag that's usually about double the price, 7 8 or $9, and they're going to say PEI Mussels which is Prince Edward Island. They're the best of the in best. In Canada. They are considered the best of the best. If $3 is not gonna bother you, buy them. They are amazing. I thought these were PEI. They Versus, are not PEI. No? Oh. Yes, Preston. Okay, Linda says the mushrooms are gorgeous. Mussels. And Michelle said thank you, and thank you, Michelle. And uh, let us know, and let us know Michelle, um, of the people that you watch who I should take a look at next time. Yes, you're a good boy. All right. While you're doing that, okay. scooping out, let's build the map okay. and let's see where people are from. Okay, so we got good old Suzanne. She's here quite regularly. Hi, Suzanne. Good to see you as always. So the map never gets it because it doesn't I figure know. out what coast is. We have Linda from Connecticut. I got that one. And we got us from Sewell, New Jersey. And we got Patrick Parks in from Atlantic City. Hey, Patrick. And Michelle is from Chicago. And we've got R.A. from Calgary, way up there, yay. Awesome, we're gonna sprinkle this with some parcels. Is that all? We only have, so we have 18 people watching, but only well, seven ones. No, to we us. know Kevin's watching and RCB, and I'm sure Dixie and Phil are in. I bet there's more people they haven't commented. Yes, but you can see right. it's kind of fun on the map to see where people are watching live from. Here we go, dear. Let me turn the map off. Oh, uh, there we go. Ooh, bread! Yay! Yes. You must have crusty bread. <laughs> so wait, 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 wait! What, 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 Robin's what, what? got the best answer. Rob, Philly in the house. <laughs> I'm Robin. So yes, I, I will have a couple of muscles as well. So let's put the map back up and let's put Rich in there. Let's see if Rich, oh, it gets, got Rich. Okay. Ooh, I gotta fix this. It clears the map when I put it up the oh. second time. I think okay. I fixed that. Doesn't matter. You ever have leftover shellfish, Joe's joke, how long can you keep it in the fridge or can it be frozen? I think once it's cooked, it can be frozen again. We never have it left over, honestly, but I would say probably in the fridge, no more than a day or two just to be safe. Uh, that's just me. Uh, what do you think, dear? You seem to know all these little trivia bits. Um, cooked ones can be frozen. Raw can never be frozen. Refrozen. Either cannot be refrozen. Yeah. That's just asking for trouble. What is your feeling on pre-shucked oysters in a container? I'm okay with them, especially like, that's what I was gonna buy if we were gonna do the fried oysters today. So I'm perfectly okay with them. Let's clarify. We're not saying oysters in a can. That's something different. Those are oysters that are cooked. Right. But a lot of uh, seafood departments will mm. pre-shuck them for you and put them in a container and, and juice. Containers. And they're yeah. amazing if you want to do yeah. fried oysters. Um, be aware they cannot be frozen. You must use them within about two days. 
Delicious. Let's just see what they look like down there. It looks good. Mm-hmm. Let's taste the juice. Polly says, I love the different tastes of oysters from the different areas of the country. Oh, and, yeah, absolutely. And yes, when we did that tasting bar, you could tell, they didn't even label them, but I could tell when it was different regions. Yeah. They had completely different tastes. It was yeah, amazing. they were labeled. Well, they gave us some guy, they were like, like when you do a wine tasting, like start here and go clockwise, and this is what they are. But I thought we had a little guide with them. This is fun. And we know about this. Watch out for hitchhikers. I've opened a few oysters. A tiny crab ran out. Yeah, well, we found, I found one of those today. I don't know where it is now. But yeah. Sometimes they will be on the outside of the shell. Sometimes they somehow manage to get inside the shell. Uh, but yeah, that happens. Mandy, I grew up at the Jersey Shore and we used to dig for clams in the summertime. We used to do that where I grew up in, uh, when I would visit my grandparents out in Long Island. And we would do that too, that was always fun. That type of clam, a lot of times, well, we'll talk about clams. Okay, Rich knows this way too well. Why? It's an inside joke, I didn't but... tell you down, didn't yell down at you from the top of the, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that, RCB. My grandma always made oyster dressing for Thanksgiving, but she never taught me. Do you have a recipe? Oh, that's too bad, Penny. Um, I have several recipes for it, actually. I've only had it a few times, and growing up, it was not my favorite thing, because as a kid, the idea of oysters being in it, but it's something, every Thanksgiving, Phil and I have that discussion. Should I make oyster stuffing? Should I make sausage stuffing? Should I make blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I'll ask the family and they're like, oyster stuffing! And then we're like, Ugh. I do have several recipes for it and it's something that is on my goal to conquer and learn to like. So stay tuned. Hold on. Hold on. The director Hold can't on. switch keys. He's busy eating his... Well, that's okay. Muscles. That's or, all right. in this case, seat. drinking a cocktail. All right. Hold on, I so, gotta got get you up. There's, the list here of the ones that were emailed is huge. Oh. And I've, we've missed a lot of them, okay. okay. This is absolutely true, I will agree with this. The only way to get good at shucking oysters is to keep doing it, you get a feel for it after a while. Yeah, absolutely, so I guess, dear, uh, and oysters are not expensive. About a, a dollar to a dollar fifty. Yeah. Now, Here's a fun fact. The bigger they are, the easier they are to open. Smaller ones can be a challenge. True. However, wow, that was good. Oh, I like this next one. We should put this question up for everybody. Ready? Okay. Clam Chowder Wars, New England or Manhattan. All Come right, on, everybody Helen. in chat, <laughs> tell us what would you rather have. Oh. New England, which is the white cream, Chowder or Manhattan, which is the tomato base. We're going to talk about, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about clam chowder in a few minutes. Um, I was in the middle of a sentence and I paused to swallow my drink and forgot what I was talking about because you interrupted me. Oh, the size of the oysters. I think, you know, when you get the great big, big oysters, sometimes they're a little tougher than the smaller ones. Clams are the same way. Mussels are all generally close to the same size. Sometimes you get a little larger one, but bigger does not always mean better is the whole point of that. All right, we've talked about oysters. We've talked about mussels. Let's talk about clams. Now, I know, I know the name today was the shell game, right? Olives, clams, mussels, and we changed the order. We went all, uh, oyster, olives, oysters, mussels, clams. Why do I do that? Well. We went to buy clams today. I was gonna make a couple things and they just didn't look good. Um, they looked, I don't know, dirty and old. They, were, they only had big ones. It, they just, I don't know. I don't know if the fish counter didn't feel like cleaning them before they put them out. They just, nothing looked good. And both of us, it was like, you know, spidey sense is saying, eh. and I think when you're buying seafood especially, if you have that doubt, don't get it. Just get something else. Uh, there's lots of ways to tell if, if seafood is fresh, but when it comes to shellfish and stuff, my personal thing is, yeah, if I have that little doubt, I'm not gonna get it. Another time, maybe. So, I didn't buy any clams to cook for you. However, 
I have this. I have a can of baby clams. Pete, why do you have canned fish in your house? Why do you have canned clams? Ew. So let's talk about clams. Now, again, like the other two, consumed all over the world for thousands of years. Here is a very fun fact. Clams were once used as currency in many parts of the world by many of the indigenous peoples of the world. And here in the Americas, the indigenous people, they were called, it was called uh, in one of the tribes, wampum. But, excuse me, all over the world, the connecting thing is the clamshells would be fashioned into some sort of bead or jewelry and then traded as currency. It was called shell money. And because in thousands and thousands of years ago, being able to adorn your body and decorate yourself was a sign of wealth and power and having that. So they would trade, they would uh, use that as money, which I thought was fascinating. A, a dumb old clamshell, right? Um, clamshells we used to, someone wrote in about earlier about having a driveway paved with clamshells and oyster shells. Uh, and in New England, uh, at least I know that they used to, the foundations of houses were often reinforced or made with clamshells and oyster shells. They would dig the foundation and put it in the walls of the foundation. How can we have a conversation about shellfish if we don't include lobster? Well, that'll be a whole nother show. Maybe after I get my bonus and raise. And, and that's a new budget. Yeah. Um, that I may have to like start a GoFundMe campaign. Anyway, um, clamshells. Uh, yeah, we used to, my, my parents, we had a huge garden growing up. And so we would do our version of composting, which was we would feed the garden. So clamshells, eggshells, shrimp shells, all that stuff got thrown out back in the garden and all those nutrients, we would, it would all get ground up and all that calcium and things would get put back into the soil. So it was uh, very green and eco-friendly. All right, so we've only had three people respond yeah. to the Manhattan versus New England. Mm -hmm. All right, so Rich says New England. New England, okay. Robin says Manhattan, but only because I can't do dairy. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, that is good to know for a certain dinner coming up. Yeah. And then Suzanne from Florida also says New England. So it if it wasn't for Robin's for dairy issue, it looks like New England's a three-way winner. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be because I don't care for New England as much. Although some of the best New England clam chowder I actually had was on the West Coast in the state of Washington. Oh, when you went to Portland? Yeah, and, and the one guy showing me around for the weekend, we drove up into Washington State uh, all the way to see Mount St. Helens. And uh, just so I could say, he, he chose that just so I could say I've been to Washington. I was like, great, great. Well, and we have a fourth um, one for New England. Okay. Oops, push the right screen. There you go. All right, okay. All right. Oh, this is interesting. What? Quahog and whelk shells are sacred to the Iroquois tribes. They are not linked to money. They are part of the cultural and religious traditions. Well, that's true. That was some of the reading I did. All of these shellfish, there are religious connections to all of them. And I think that's common among all shellfish. Some religions say, no, you can't eat them. They're bottom feeders. They're filter feeders. They're unpure. Other religions say, absolutely part of nature. Some of them, uh, especially the indigenous people like here in America, like the Iroquois tribe, it's all very sacred. So clams are confusing, kind of like shrimp. You know, you hear about shrimp and they're like jumbo, ultra jumbo, tiny, mid-sized, blah, 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 and you don't know what the sizes are. So on shrimp, you look at the label on the bag if they're frozen and it'll say like 16 to 20, which is 16 to 20 per pound or 31 to 50, whatever. Clams, the most common sizes, there's four. There's little necks, which are one and a half to two and a half inches wide. They're great for eating on the half shell. They're sweet, they're tender, juicy, delicious. Next is top neck clams, which are two to three inches wide. They're also good for on the half shell, but you can cook with them probably a little better than the little necks. Next up is very common, cherry stone. You've probably seen that at your fish counter, cherry stone clams. I like using them for a certain type of clam chowder, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, but a lot of times people will use them in cooking. They're great for frying and they're about three to four inches 
in, in width. Then there's chowder clams, which are, are bigger, four plus inches. Uh, those are just great big, big clams. Then there's steamers, which have the softer shell. That's what we used to dig up when, when I was a kid. We would go uh, down to my grandparents. They, their, their development had a private beach and we would go clam digging. We used to call them, sorry YouTube, I've got to say a bad word. We used to call them piss clams because we would dig them and their little breather thing would be sticking up and it would squirt water at you as you were getting close to it. And, and that's how you knew. And it would like call up and pull that thing in and close it. And uh, But yeah, we used to call them piss clams. Next to quahogs, which is a type of clam that are big. There's gooey ducks, which is that great big thing, also with the breather tube thing. I've never had them. I've seen them on TV a lot. Um, they're not easy to come by. And of course, razor clams, which are perfectly delicious. You can get them in a lot of Chinese buffets and Asian markets, probably in some restaurants. You can probably find them in some seafood markets too. Um, they're long and thin, and they look like the old-fashioned straight razor that that people used to use 100-some years ago. This is a good one. I'm not sure if you know the answer. I do if you don't. Why is it okay for fish departments to store clams and mussels on ice, but you should not do it at home? I kind of do know the answer. The first of all is uh, when they have them in those trays of ice and sometimes covered in ice, there's a drain underneath that. So as the ice is melting, the water runs off. And remember, these are, for the most part, saltwater creatures. There are freshwater varieties of them all that are edible, but for the most part, we don't eat them. We only eat the salt water. So that freshwater ice, as it melts, if the clams and things were sitting in it, it could kill them because uh, it'll open up and try to breathe and it would it would die. So they have drains. Is that what you were going to say, dear? It's pretty close. The, uh, mussels especially, they can okay. be both fresh water and salt water. And you as the consumer won't know that, but the fishmonger who got them does. So if you see them in their, in a case, just laying out on a board, then those are salt water variety. If they're covered with ice, and it's getting on a nice strain, then they're fresh water. Now that's always. why you you don't see oysters buried in ice in the fish stores. Just to make sure you, everyone knows when you do oysters and mussels at home, you spread them out on a tray or a bag that's open. It should not be sealed. Put a damp paper towel or a damp cloth over the top. You can put ice underneath it to keep it cold, but if you cover it with a damp towel in the refrigerator, mussels will go about three days, oysters will go maybe a little more. Okay, put yourself on screen for a minute. I need to walk away. Okay. Get something. So keep talking. And because let's see. We've, we've got Keith here from Pottstown. Yay, Keith. And Robin got a chuckle of your description of piss clams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're coming back, so. I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Oh! What? What's that for? A little wine. It's here. I know it's getting warm, but it's calling to me, and I thought, you're not going to let me have something that you can't have. Well, it means I better finish this real quick. And if... The I finished mine hours ago. Where have you been? You know, if the kids come to dinner for steak dinner tonight, steak and oysters, and yeah, steak and oysters, uh, we'll have red wine. See here? You gotta think how many oysters is still left I haven't shucked. You know, because we can each have a couple. All right, there you and go. And again, Rich knows us well. He's like, you two drunks, more booze? Cheers. Well, you know, it's you have to there. be a little bit loose in order to do these live streams every week. No, I'm that, but it's sitting there. It's calling my name. It's from our local winery, uh, Stokeland Estate Winery. This is the Cat's Paw Winery. Where is Stokeland? Medford? Yes. Yes. So Medford, New Jersey. And New Jersey Medford actually has a, no, a really good amount of yeah. wines. It's about... 25 of them of our friends Rob and Robin were with us a few weeks ago and we hit only like three, but, but we went there's to Stokeland. a ton. Actually, we went to Stokeland. Yes. That's where this came from. Okay. So back to clams, back to clams. Uh, so those are the common types of clams. There's lots of others. You know, you, you see them in all the seafood markets. There's, you know, green tiger striped clams and all kinds of other ones. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I bet the Caspol wine is Mialvelus. Yes, it is, Rich. It, it's a, a Chardonnay blend. It's a, that much sweet, but it's delicious. Yeah, Stokeman was great. And this is wine I used in this, and what you guys didn't see is that I, I took the lid off to check it, and it went whoosh and flamed up, and I got a little singe uh, while Phil was talking about the, the other channel. But as a professional, I covered it up, wiped my hand, all was well. <laughs> anyway, how do you eat clams? What do you do? So opening clams is a little different than an oyster because you can do it from the front, and you could use a butter knife. I would never use a sharp knife. Uh, but the preferred thing really is even that oyster knife to open those clams because the oyster knives, they are, I mean, they have a little point. So you have to be careful. Here's what I want. Yeah, you have to be careful because that point is a little sharp. It could stab you. Turn it over a little but, bit so they can see how the front of it points up a little bit. So there you go. Like see? that, yeah. That's how so it gets it has into the oysters. Curve, right. And you see how dull this is. There's no sharp blade, just this point is a little sharp. So this is ideal, and because it's thick and short, it's ideal to have leverage to get in and, and twist it. And this is another great thing for clams. You get in, you twist it, you pop it open, you scrape out the muscle on either side, boom, bombs your uncle. Works for scallops, works for clams. So eating them raw and on the half shell is wonderful. Of course, and there's fried clams, uh, which I almost, almost bought yeah. some frozen fried clams and then I couldn't bring myself to do it. Here, it... address this one. Oops. Is the rule about only eating shellfish only in months that have an R in them still true? Um, see, I've read conflicting information, dear, and you, you schooled me on this earlier, so you answer it. Okay. Well, let's put us both here. Okay. Officially, does it matter anymore? Not really. A lot of it was based on the fact that in the summer months, the weather, the water gets much warmer, which means the potential for oysters and clams to pick up um, some diseases and things was right. much, but it was also a breeding season. Mm -hmm. Now that oysters or clams are mostly farmed, it isn't that important. That being said, all of the sites do say that oysters that come out of the warm water taste different than the oysters right. that come out of the cold water. So the months with no R you right. know, would be June, uh, May, June, July, and August in the hot weather. So that everyone agrees on. They do taste different. And that rule was only for oysters. Clams and other shellfish were different. Correct. Yeah. So... How else? You can fry them. Maybe you were went to Friendly's and had their fried clam sandwich. But, you know, fried clams, how bad can they be? Um, I make a clam dip, this retro dip. Uh, that's and really good. It is really good. And we did an episode on it 100 years ago. Maybe we need to redo it. But what's funny is I will make it up at our campground at the beginning of season when it's chillier and at the end of season when it's chillier. And we have an open cocktail party every Saturday. That is the first thing to go, that clam dip. And I don't know why. Usually that I would think you, that would scare people off, but nope. Now, let's talk about clam chowder. Chowder. Okay, before I do that, someone just sent me a text and asked me to post the recipe that we did this mussels and white wine. We did it as a video. Okay. It's an older video. We did it yep. in 2021. So it's probably not of our best. It's in our real kitchen upstairs. It's better than when we started this six years ago. Um, it's also in the comment section, uh, the description section of yeah. this live stream. Also, someone asked me for the smoking kit that oh, yeah. we use. So let me bring that up. This is what it's called. Hold on. Here, do it again. There you go. There we go. And, you know, Santa brought this for us for Christmas. Uh, through our kids, so thank you, Strattons, Michelle and Craig, and um, uh, Connor and Emily. Thank you very much. This is wonderful. It's very fun to play with. And again, let's also put in chat the link to Michelle's channel. Okay. It's in our show notes. Okay. 
But we also I, had that too. I, so. I still have stuff to talk about, and we're like at seven o'clock at night, dear. We've been going for seventeen hours because you keep interrupting. Oh, me. we're four thirty already. Yes. Okay, keep so, going. Zip it. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about clam chowder. And if you interrupt me again, I'm just going home. So. There's New England, the white, creamy, rich clam chowder. There's Manhattan, tomato-based, sometimes a little spicy. My favorite, my new favorite, is Rhode Island clam chowder. And you're like, what's Rhode Island? It is a clear chowder, meaning no tomato, no cream. It's very clam-forward, clam and vegetables. But, you know, there's a lot of other clam chowders that are kind of like daughters or children of these first three. There's the Boston cream clam chowder, New York clam chowder, Lansing can, there's Long Island clam chowder. I'm sure you're watching, and if you're not, shame on you. Uh, there's Maine clam chowder. There was even a Kansas clam chowder. Now, how in the world they do clam chowder in Kansas, but it, you know, a landlocked state, but it is. But most of these are from the New England states. They are sub-variants of the regular ones. Marcus says, my wife makes mussels in a spicy tomato sauce with red wine. That sounds delicious. Okay, this would be fun because we have done many of these. I'd love for you to teach us how to do a New England clam bake. You know what? That's that's a possibility this summer. Um, because, I, you know, there's a low, there's a low country boil. There's I, say, I know you're England... over it, but we're experts at the lower country boil. Again, I can't even finish the sentence. That's why we're going over today because my husband... Maybe duct tape will work. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, get your boy. Get your dad, take care of him. Anyway, you know, there's low country boil and then there's a New England clam bake, which is more seafood. And I think we're going to do that. I would rather have that than a low country boil. All right, that's all I have to talk about. Oh, well, no, I don't. One more thing. So clam products. I showed you this can of baby clams. I always keep around cans of clams, clam juice in a jar. Okay, here we go. And the reason is, a lot of these things can be made with these products. Uh, the clam dip can be made. You can, you can also get these with, in minced, already minced for you. So that's what you want to use for chowders. You, you know, a quick chowder, absolutely. I'll ask around about that one. They didn't like that in Kansas City. No, Kansas the state. Rich, not Kansas City. Kansas the state. But who knows? There might be, you know, a version in Missouri. Well, at least Robin likes our banter. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but so I, I keep a lot of these things in my pantry. So if I need a quick clam chowder, boom, I've got a couple clams. And they're not terrible. That's the thing. They're pretty good um, if I can't get fresh clams. The clam juice, especially if I'm doing something with seafood and I need to up the ante a little bit. If I'm doing a chipino or, a, you know, a chowder or something. Yeah, a bisque even. Throw some clam juice in it. It amps up the flavor. Something self-serving. We've had a lot of people looking that and what? a bunch of people online. Hit the like button down there yep. on that so other people will watch this tomorrow. And for those that are cold on the East Coast, it was 11 degrees this morning. We have a heat wave right now. It's up to 34. No, it's down to 32. 32, excuse yeah. me. It was 34 about half an hour ago. All right, so that wraps up. That's all I have about clams. I spoke more about clams than anything else, and I didn't even have any to show you. But So what's coming up next year for Let's Celebrate TV? Mm, how about, <laughs> if any of you have looked at our Facebook feed yesterday, we had a frenzy of cocktail testing. We tested we seven did. different cocktails. We did, yeah. We actually used, made so many cocktails, and we have two freezers in this house. We used every bit of ice this out there. Yeah, yeah. And for those who have ever seen our bar, now, we, we did 25 not, shakers. Let's be clear. And we, we used them too. Let's be clear. We did not drink. It was literally a little sip and like, oh, no, no, dump it. Or, oh, yeah, that's good. Write it down, dump it. So we, 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 we did not consume seven cocktails each yesterday. Don't give Close. me that. Don't give me. No, mm -hmm. no, dear. Mm -hmm. No. Either way, there's four cocktail episodes in the works. We have, still I keep promising you, this wonderful Moroccan vegetable stew that's coming up. We have to figure out how to keyword it. It's a little tricky. We also have I'm in the works. I'm editing it right now for, for Wednesday. He's editing stuffed peppers. 
Excuse me, and... With spicy tomato rice. Yes, was, well, yeah, spicy tomato rice. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what else was there? Oh, shepherd's pie. I feel like shepherd's pie. I'm working on it. I made a quick version yesterday, and like, okay, we, we need to... Lamb is a staple a in this place. It is. The problem is, is that shepherd's pie is made of leftover lamb. Well, that's sort of like leftover wine. Yeah. What the heck is what that? What the heck anyway, is that? Anyway, you're probably going, no, shepherd's pie is beef. Wrong. What do shepherds shepherd? Shepherds shepherd lamb, not cows. If you use ground beef in the same concoction, it's called a cottage pie. Delicious, but a separate entity from shepherd's pie. <sighs> Thank you, Robin and Rich. So that's what's coming up. Now, what's our next live stream about? What's the date of our next live stream, dear? Uh, no, 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 no. 14 days that? from today? Yes. Uh, it'll be the 4th of February. Okay, we're gonna do a little party planning. We're gonna walk through planning a Valentine's Day dinner and maybe cooking a nice dish for Valentine's Day. A little romance, maybe a little chocolate. You never know. But it's gonna be all about planning a dinner, a romantical, wonderful dinner. Unless we change our minds and then it'll be something else and we'll let you know. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us. Sorry we went a little over, but it's been so much fun. We had to go over and uh, hope you're having a great time. Keeping warm everywhere. We'll be in chat for a few more minutes. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. <laughs>